The Baltimore City's got a new program aimed at clearing trash from city neighborhoods, which has been a problem for years, and also helping people find jobs. Devin Martinez, Mark Roper is live outside Department of Public Works. Mark, they're starting in just one neighborhood, but if it works, they're hoping to expand later. Yeah, good morning, Christian. And Coldstream, Homestead, Montebello will be the first neighborhood to try this out. And city leaders say that if it works well there, they'll try it out in other neighborhoods as well. But first to get started, the city will hire three people in the Coldstream, Homestead, Montebello neighborhood to clean up their community. They'll make $15 an hour to clean streets and alleys, while at the same time, they'll also receive workforce development training. Then when the program is complete, Participants will be trained and ready for a full-time job at the Department of Public Works. Meanwhile, DPW will work with the CHM neighborhood to see how things are going by tracking how much trash is collected, how many 311 service requests are received and taken care of, as well as check and see if, if it makes property values go up over time. Now, community leader Mark Washington came up with this idea, and he secured the grants for the staff and equipment needed, and he will lead the effort. My grandmother used to say, it's not where you live, but how you live. And today with the support of Mayor Brandon Scott, our partners in Solid Waste, DHCD, the Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation, and Healthy Neighborhoods, the communities of Coldstream, Homestead, Montebello choose to live with illegal dumping no more. Today, we choose to be the change. Now this DPW program costs $70,000 and the money for the pilot program came from a grant from the Department of Housing and Community Development as well as the Weinberg Foundation. Reporting live in downtown Baltimore, Mark Roper, WMAR2 News. Okay, uh, Mark, thanks very much for that. Today might be a nice day to get out and pick up some trash in the neighborhood. Going to check in now with Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles for a look at that forecast here on a Tuesday morning. Lynette, how's it looking out there? It is cloudy right now, Christian, but we will decrease clouds as we go through the rest of today. But the key for today is the fact that it's going to be dry out there for this afternoon. As we continue into your tomorrow, we have some changes in the forecast. Now, the key for today, I say dry because we have a lot going on for today. I'm going to show you uh, the forecast uh, for the O's a little later. But in the meantime, out the door this morning, you can leave the rain gear. You do not need that this morning and you won't need it this afternoon. Actually, by this afternoon, later afternoon hours, we may see a little bit of sunshine out there, so you might just want to keep those uh, sunglasses handy. The satellite and radar wider view picking up on some shower activity down off towards the south and west this morning and up uh, across the upper Midwest. They're dealing with a little bit of snow coming in across that area. Look what we have going on. Next chance for rain as we head into Wednesday, which is tomorrow. So that's what will bring rain back into the picture and that will stick around as we head into your Thursday as well. So enjoy today as we will stay dry and we will see a little bit of sunshine out there. Here are the temperatures this morning. Numbers are a bit cooler compared to yesterday at this time. Our lows now for this time of the year should be at 42 and we are above that, but again, still a bit cooler than yesterday. So I do suggest that jacket before you head out and about. We are looking at temperatures that are in the mid 40s to right around 50 degrees for low temperatures. And our highs today will be seasonal uh, as a little bit warmer than what we were yesterday because again, we will see a little bit more sunshine as that weak high pressure continues to build in. So this is what it looks like as we head into Wednesday morning. A couple of showers across the area. We'll have another round as we go into the afternoon evening time frame as well. And then we will have the potential for more rain as we head into your Thursday. So out the door cast again for today, decreasing clouds and seasonal. And if you're headed to the uh, uh, double header for today. Again, I start you out with that first pitch coming in at 405 and take you all the way down through nine. And the bottom line is that we are going to stay dry throughout the game. So no worries for any type of cancellations or delays for today. Here's a seven day forecast and we can see that temperatures become a little cooler as we head into uh, the end of the work week. But then we rebound nicely as we head into next week. And we're also going to be dealing with a 50 50 weekend right now. It looks like Saturday. Saturday looks to be on the dry side and we could see some showers on Sunday. Now let's go to check the traffic with Lauren.
Thank you very much, Lynette. I am following a crash in Baltimore County involving a pedestrian. This is reported on Church Lane at Milford Mill Road. There's also a tractor trailer on fire. It's in a parking lot right off of Reisterstown Road in Owings Mills. This is going to impact traffic at Carwan Road. If you're commuting out on 695, clear conditions at Liberty Road. No delays either. Crossing the Key Bridge and heading up to Towson. 83 in the tunnels are also up to speed. And drive times look good on Interstate 70, 97, and Route 50. There was debris south of 95. That is cleared at 195. Coming up in today's Good to Know, I'll introduce you to a mother and daughter who are using art to help families with autism. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Lauren, thanks very much. A local man hadn't been able to go to the dentist because he can't afford it. He has recently finished treatments, though, for throat cancer. So with the rising cost, he contacted Mallory Safaste to try and get some help, and now he will be able to get the treatment he needed. That is a matter for Mallory. We'll show you what happened coming up on Good Morning Maryland. Welcome back in. It is 624 right now. A mom in Baltimore County found a special unexpected connection with her daughter during the pandemic. Debbie American News Lauren Cook has more on the artwork they're making and how it's helping families affected by autism. Lauren, this one definitely sounds good to know. It certainly is, Christian. Thank you. Cassie is a Parkton native who suffers from severe autism. When the pandemic began, the 21 year old's life was turned upside down. She couldn't go to school and had tremendous difficulty with remote learning. But Cassie and her mother, Jennifer Drucker, rose above their new challenges and used extra time at home to explore Cassie's passion to paint. Cassie was going to be home for an indefinite period of time, which, which stopped me from being able to work. And I really, I, I panicked. And um, we just were doing, we made some paintings. One of the, it was about the third day of, of quarantine and I posted them on my Facebook page and friends wanted to purchase them. The mother and daughter duo started Cassie's Creations and are now selling one of a kind masterpieces that they make together. Cassie is not capable of doing these paintings on her own. So I'm literally wrapped around her and we're doing it as one. The paintings are made with acrylics and secret ingredients to give each piece a unique look. They cost between $20 and $225 and can be customized in size and color. We mix the acrylic paint with a whole bunch of ingredients that make it, um, it they make it connect with each other, each color connect with each other in a really strange, unique way. And it's, it's, it's beautiful to the eye. We don't use a paintbrush, which most people find surprising. Cassie is her happiest self when painting with her mom. They've sold almost 300 paintings so far and plan to continue making art long after the pandemic. And she wants to continue it. I mean, she's she sits at the same place each day waiting, waiting to paint. So it's really special. It's, it is, it's an unexpected silver lining. Cassie and Jennifer are donating a portion of their proceeds this April, which is Autism Awareness Month, to Pathfinders for Autism. To purchase one of Cassie's creations, go to WMAR2news.com for more information. You can also donate a painting to be given to a local children's hospital, senior center, or special needs school. Cassie and Jennifer will match every donation they receive. That's today's Good to Know. Wow, that's incredible, Lauren. You're going to tell me those could be hanging up in an art gallery somewhere. Just amazing. Thanks very much for that. Well, we are continuing to follow the latest developments on demonstrations going on all over the country right now. They are in response to that newly released video of an officer shooting and killing an African-American man in Minnesota. Coming up, a former Maryland state trooper says he does not believe the officer's explanation of what happened there. That story is coming up after the break. And we'll, of course, get a check of the traffic and the weather as we continue with Good Morning Maryland. You're watching the station that's working for you. WMAR 2 News. Now, good morning, Maryland. 2021 legislative session ended at midnight. A lot of people thought this would be the year for marijuana to be made fully legal in Maryland. Find out what lawmakers considered higher priorities. And this morning, meet a man who suffered side effects from radiation from battling throat cancer with his teeth and his throat being sore. He needs dental work, but he couldn't afford it. That is a matter for Mallory. Good Morning Maryland continues right now. It is Tuesday, April the 13th. Good Morning Maryland. I'm Christian Schaefer. Lauren Cook will have your time saver traffic here in just a couple minutes. First, though, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles for a look at that forecast here on a Tuesday morning. Lynette. 
All right, Christian. Yes, I am tracking uh, decreasing clouds as we go throughout the day. Dry conditions for today. So we'll be able to get the game in. Doubleheader two games as we go in through the afternoon, evening time frame. And I'm tracking seasonal temperatures and also the next chance for showers that will be in here as we head towards tomorrow. So we do have a temperature change out there this morning. We are about two to five degrees cooler compared to this time yesterday as we do have numbers in the upper 40s, the mid 40s and a few 50s on the map this morning. All temperatures though a little above average and as we go into the afternoon we will see temperatures that will be more seasonal for today. The satellite and radar picking up with clouds this morning and then slowly but surely we will start to decrease those clouds as we head more towards I'd say about four o'clock five o'clock we'll start to see again uh, more sunshine out there. So I'm going with a mostly cloudy to partly cloudy sky before it's all said and done today. In terms of those high temperatures going about 64 degrees and we should be at 64 degrees now for this time of the year. Now let's go to check the traffic with Lauren. Thank you very much, Lynette. I am following a pedestrian involved accident right now in Baltimore County. This is on Church Lane at Milford Mill Road. If you are heading out in Owings Mills, a tractor trailer fire has been cleared from a parking lot right off of Bricerstown Road at Carlon Road. No backups on the Beltway here at Liberty Road. Drive times look good also from Dundalk up to Towson. And the speed check in Baltimore is also clear. 83 in the tunnels are all moving right along. 70, 97, and Route 50 are in the green as well. Christian? Okay, Lauren, thanks very much. And now to those large demonstrations in Minnesota after an African American man was shot and killed by a police officer this week. It happened in the town of Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. That's about 10 miles north and west of Minneapolis, where, by the way, the trial of the police officer charged with killing George Floyd last year will continue today. Prosecution expected to rest today. On Sunday afternoon, a man named Dante Wright was stopped by a Brooklyn Center police officer. Police have identified the officer who then fired a shot, killing him as Kim Potter. She'd been with that police department for 26 years. She's now on administrative leave. Uh, WMRT News' Megan Knight is following the situation there in Minnesota and has new details. Megan. Well, Christian, despite that curfew enacted by the governor of Minnesota from dusk until dawn, hundreds of people took to the streets of Brooklyn Center last night to protest the death of Dante Wright. And we've got some new video from overnight of those protests. Now, it looks like it started outside of the Brooklyn Center Police Department. Lots of people there chanting, some throwing things at the building and also at police officers. Officers using gas canisters and flashbang grenades to try to break up those crowds. Now, the ABC affiliate out in Minneapolis is reporting this morning that officers so far made about 40 arrests since last night. And as you can imagine, the tensions are very high here. As just a few miles away, the trial of the former police officer accused of killing George Floyd is now underway. And now we have the death of an unarmed black man shot and killed by a police officer. Former Maryland State Trooper Officer Neil Franklin spoke to CNN last night, saying that he does not think that the shooting of Dante Wright was accidental, despite what the uh, Brooklyn Center police chief was calling it. And he says it is time for quick reform to one particular law enforcement policy. What we need is a national use of force standard. You know, we need to look at uh, uh, Graham versus Connor, which is the case law behind police use of force. And we need to change that standard to an, a, a reasonable, objective view, not one that is subjective as it is now. Now, at one point during this protest last night, the mayor of Brooklyn Center was out on the streets with police officers. He called the shooting death of Wright, quote, deeply tragic. Also going on to say that he believes that the officer who shot and killed him, who's now been identified as Officer Kim Potter, should be fired from her job. Right now, she's on administrative leave. Christian. Okay, Megan, thanks very much. Much more coming up on that story on Good Morning America. Meantime, despite that decrease in the number of doses of the Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine, federal officials say the country can still meet its vaccination goals. The problem was at the Emergent Biosolutions plant in southeast Baltimore, which had been producing the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and also another one developed by the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca that's not being used in this country yet. Now, after that problem that led to the destruction of 15 million Johnson & Johnson doses, there's been major changes at that facility. On Monday, the White House senior advisor for COVID-19 response talked about those changes, which he says should allow for a rapid increase in the production of Johnson & Johnson vaccine doses. 
We are pleased by the fact that Johnson & Johnson, <coughs> in the meantime, has taken control of the plant, um, has um, eliminated the confounding factor of another vaccine being produced there, um, and they remain confident that they're going to be able to deliver um, at or near uh, 24 million this month and over, you know, and close to 100 million uh, by, by May. And so uh, we remain confident, big picture, that we have more than enough vaccine to continue to vaccinate the public. Overall, there's been 90 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines delivered around the country over the last three weeks. It is 636 right now. The Capitol Police officer killed in the line of duty earlier this month will lie in honor at the Capitol Rotunda today. William Billy Evans was killed when an attacker drove his car into two officers at a barricade outside the Capitol. That was on April 2nd. He's going to be the second Capitol Police officer to lie in honor this year. Officer Brian Sicknick received the honor after being killed in the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. Billy Evans was an 18 year veteran of the Capitol Police Department. Visitation is going to be limited because of the pandemic, but President Biden is expected to pay his respects along with members of Congress and of course fellow Capitol Police officers as well. 637 right now police reform has been a huge issue all over the country and here in Maryland. There will be changes to laws that protect police officers in Maryland after bills that passed during the 2021 General Assembly session, which ended at midnight. WMR2 News Aaron McPherson has the details coming up when we continue with the Tuesday edition of Good Morning Maryland. Welcome back into Good Morning Maryland. It is 639 right now. Governor Hogan's got a bill signing ceremony today after the 2021 General Assembly session wrapped up at midnight. WMR2 News Aaron McPherson is live in Annapolis now with some of the bills that made it past that midnight deadline. Aaron. Good morning, Christian. Well, there were two key points focused on during this 90 days of the session, one being police reform and another ways that state lawmakers could help during this pandemic. But a lot of other topics were discussed as well. One of those legalization of marijuana. That's a hot topic, but no action was taken on that. Sports betting was approved and could start as soon as the fall. The state expects to raise between 15 and 19 million dollars a year from sports betting. That would be used to help pay for education and take out cocktails, which helped restaurants and bars survive during this pandemic is going to be permanent in the state as long as you're buying food as well. The pandemic relief happened early on in the session and the police reform reform bills were vetoed by the governor and then overridden just this past weekend. Yeah, this is a serious issue. I tell you, I'm so proud of this body. I'm so happy for this body to tackle this and to really be the first in the nation to uh, enact a lot of these legislation. I uh, really appreciate it. It really gives me and gives us hope. The police reform package sets a new standard for when police can use force and allows the public to obtain disciplinary records and complaints against officers. Plus, the law changes what happens when police are accused of misconduct and how police handle situations. Now, Governor Larry Hogan said this legislative session is the most successful one he's been a part of, but he does want to see more done when it comes to crime reduction. The next session begins in 90 days. Live here in Annapolis, Aaron McPherson, WMAR 2 News. Okay, Aaron, thanks very much for that. We still have much more ahead on Good Morning Maryland. COVID-19 been dominating all the news out of the medical world, but what about dental care? There's a lot of people who cannot afford that right now, but there are options to get that work done for free. That's a matter for Mallory, and it's coming up on Good Morning Maryland. Welcome back in. It is 644 right now. NFL fans been known to have an adult beverage or 12 when watching games. Recently, the website lines.com asked the question, which fan base in the NFL does the most binge drinking during games? And guess where the Ravens fan base finished? Seventh out of the 32 NFL teams. 81% of Ravens fans admitted to binge drinking on game day. Fans of the Atlanta Falcons, as you see, binge drink the most, 86%. By the way, at the bottom of that list, the New England Patriots, they say they, say they do the least binge drinking, just 42% of Patriots fans binge drinking on game day. I'm going to send it out now to Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles. And I always get a little skeptical of these surveys when they just ask people what they do because people can say what they want. Um, you don't always get the most honest responses, but it's a good indication of uh, the times that people are having during those game days. Meantime, we got two Orioles games this afternoon. They play seven innings this year, Lynette, for double headers. So two seven inning games between the Orioles and the Mariners starting this afternoon. 
Yes, and I have that forecast, Christian. And we start you out at 4.05. That's the first game. And I'm going to take it all the way to 9 o'clock, so it goes into the second game as well. As we continue through the rest of today, we are definitely going to be dealing with uh, some dry time. So the bottom line is it was postponed yesterday to today because we had the rain in the forecast. I guess it was because of the rain, uh, but the bottom line today is that we are going to stay dry through those games. In terms of what we have this morning, dry conditions, that sun is up and uh, Dundalk looking good. We do see those clouds around and slowly but surely we will continue to decrease clouds as we go throughout the, throughout the day courtesy of a weak area of high pressure that will continue to build in and we will start to see some sun before it's all said and done for today. This is what it looks like. The satellite radar, not quite active. Let me widen out the view a bit and you can see a little bit more activity the further to the south you go or if you're headed up to the upper Midwest for today. They're dealing with a little bit of snow, some blue on the map there and we can see what's going to be in the cards for tomorrow as well for the upper Midwest. Still some snow showers uh, in the morning for them, but we will be dealing with uh, some warmer conditions out there, bringing us the potential for 